to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty, and I am undone before you're the King of Kings and Lord. Of Lord, you are the King of Kings, you are the Lord of hosts, your glorious majesty. Can I tell you, you must get to a point in your life where it is not just your knowledge that mentors people, even your worship, your allegiance to the King of Kings will make someone to say, listen, ordinary I would have laughed at this person, but I saw him 10 years ago, the same rolling, I laughed at the rolling, but look where the rolling has brought him today. And I will join and also roll. If that rolling has brought him to this level, don't waste your influence. Use it to mentor nations. Don't waste your influence. The first prize for new dimensions, a deeper work with God. Please sit down. Price number two, let's hurry up so we can pray tonight. Is someone already blessed? The second price that must be paid, a non-negotiable price. Listen very carefully now. Just help those under the anointing, but please don't be distracted. If you must ascend higher levels, not only in the spirit, but in life and in destiny, superior levels of exploits, ever increasing testimonies the price of unbending focus that is the second price the price of unbending focus mm. show me a man of unbending focus a man who will not be distracted whether by success or failure i show you a man who will remain and increase philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 even to 15 Philippians chapter 3 brethren I count not myself to have apprehended he's speaking to brethren we're talking about Apostle Paul here Paul the great Paul the anointed Paul the miracle worker Paul the learned Paul the intelligent brethren I count not myself that means you can count me to have apprehended but this is my honest review about my life. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. He never said forgetting wrong things that are behind. He never said forgetting thing, good things that are behind. He said forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to the things which are before. Ah, there are always things before. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He says, let us therefore, 
as many as be mature that's the meaning of the word perfect be thus minded how minded that means at any point in your life count yourself to not have apprehended are we together now that even though you are honestly receiving an applause justifiably so for the strides the kingdom strides you are making that you get to a point where you do not allow your focus to bend i count myself to not have apprehended but this one thing i do isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7 I found this scripture and it was quite interesting the bible says for the lord god will help me therefore shall i not be confounded therefore i have set my face like a flint and i know that i shall not be ashamed there is a relationship between focus are we together now focus and advancement there is a relationship between distraction and shame the price of unbending focus i wrote a few things here that i want you to see number one under the price for unbending focus you must obtain grace to fight arrival mentality arrival in court you must obtain grace from god to fight arrival mentality i've arrived at this level of anointing i've arrived at this level of grace i've arrived at this level of revelation i've arrived at this level of prosperity i have 10 estates i'm a billionaire i'm a politician finally i've gotten to be a house member or senator or president or governor or whatever it is i am now a ceo i am now the african representative of this bank or this conglomerate arrival mentality has destroyed many people same philippians please give us 3 and verse 12 let's read 12 and 13 First, same philippians chapter 3 from verse 12 philippians 3 12 okay let me just pull it up here so that we don't waste time philippians hallelujah all right he said not as though i had already attained either were already perfect but i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which i am apprehended of jesus christ verse 13 he says brethren now where we read i count myself so he's saying it is not as far as i'm concerned no matter what you tell me i still walk like somebody who has something in front i don't walk like someone who has arrived you know what arrival mentality is that means you get to a point where you tell yourself i'm not talking of contentment arrival mentality is very different from contentment hallelujah where you feel there is nothing more to do with your life as far as maximizing life is concerned you know that happened to lucifer i will ascend above the stars of god and i will be like the most high after all my office is the custodian of the mysteries of heaven so i think i know everything little did he know that there was more beware of arrival mentality i wrote something down here both failure and success both discouragement and over celebration of results can be distractions that means success and failure can do the same thing to you eventually failure can discourage you success can create complacency while it is good and honest to celebrate every stride you must be careful and manage your celebration so that you do not over celebrate results now the truth is that when you rise among people who are lower than you no matter how little little your result is it will look big in the eyes of those lower than you you must be honest with yourself and gauge yourself by a global kingdom standard and then ask yourself have i really gone there in africa we celebrate very small things small results small results in business in ministry you will see a little corporation that maybe is netting just a few million naira even not even dollars and yet the pride that the leaders and the executives have respectfully speaking now 
just because you can afford food to eat just because you have a house you have a car just because you can afford a bit of luxury living and a few things it does that is not all there is to life there is so much more are we together the price of unbending focus I talk to myself every time on this wise Joshua Selman thank God for what God is doing in your life my phone is full of text messages from people literally across the globe without exaggeration oh man of God I listen to this this one happened and in all fairness they are not lying however you must tell yourself everything God has given me now is not all he plans to give me every level is the test for the next level every level as soon as you achieve something in a level know that it is automatically the exam you are writing for the next level every level of achievement is the test you must pass for the next level are we together so both failure and success if you have done well and the world is celebrating you don't run away don't push it away and say no 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 don't celebrate me no 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 but you must know when to draw the line the moment celebration becomes flattery and is already planting the seed of complacency you must stop and say thank you i have received enough to motivate me for the next level my exams have started you must know when the feast of celebration is over and when you've entered the classroom to write the exams if you are still dancing in the classroom believing that the classroom is the place for celebration you will fail your exams thank God for this new level of the prophetic thank God for this new level of grace this new level of insight but now that you have given me oh God thank you for it but I know it is an exam I'm writing moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful hallelujah there are many many little small prayer groups that will never grow into a giant kingdom platform for blessing the nations because right from infancy many of them are almost killing themselves on an on arrival let me tell you this I, i'm speaking particularly to those in probably ministry business and all of that let us be very careful let us be very careful let's learn from our fathers there is nothing that somebody can want that has not been given and yet these fathers you see them with humility including businessmen look let me tell you for those of you who have had the opportunity to sit with billionaires and very wealthy people you will be flattered by their humility and their sense of honor and respect and you'll be asking is it really is it these people are? and then the ones that don't have anything you will know immediately that they don't have anything are we together a wealthy man can enter a restaurant and is very cautious greeting people good afternoon how are you and somebody will tell you that's the owner of this restaurant too and you hear somebody who will sit down five minutes is impatient you've kept me waiting here you don't know who i am you better you see you easily know when people begin to when they lose focus and they lose vision listen i don't know if i've taught it here but if you study the life of gideon there were two tests that they had to pass to qualify the 300 who defeated the Midianites when Gideon blew the trumpet the Bible says 33,000 people came but there were too many God said he said no I can't take these people to the place of destiny like this test number one whoever is afraid whoever loves and misses his home more than the future go back and the Bible says about 20 or 22,000 people went back that means everybody was there hey, we'll make it but some were already dead on arrival they went back and he said there are still too many test number two he told them you will get to the water brooks the water brooks was not at the beginning of the journey you would have to make some progress and he says study their behavior in the presence of that water those who bend and lap like dogs those are the ones that i want you to keep those who sit down and properly drink like human beings let them go back home do you know what that meant if you watch a dog and as it takes water 
it never takes what I sit in or lying down. It means and I'm, I'm aware that I still have somewhere to go. This is a momentary success. By the time you get to the water brooks after walking for a long time, that is a sign of results. Now you have gotten water to quench your thirst. And he said, those who sit down, that means they have camped. I'm not standing up again. Let them go home. Their attitude. Those who lap like dogs, that means they still have the sense of vision that this is just a momentary blessing. But the real journey is not to, I didn't leave my home to come and drink water. I le left my home to go and defeat the Midianites. And if I find water on the way, thank God, but I will not come there. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less We know there's more that's found in you Prophesy to yourself And we will never settle for less When we know there's more that's found in you Price number two The price of unbending focus unbending focus can you still remember the vision of your ministry or you are forgotten can you still remember the vision of your organization can you still remember what you wrote on paper some of you have even misplaced the notebooks where you wrote the visions that govern your life because as at the time you wrote it you didn't have a business as at the time you wrote it you didn't know you would be this great you wrote many things there. Now you cannot even find the book. Buy another one and start again. If the words are really precious, you honor them by writing. It says, write for these words are faithful. Write, they are true. Hallelujah. If you don't have a vision for your life and the things that you are doing, life will give you many visions. Useless visions that are inconsistent with the blueprint of your call. For someone God is speaking to you, get back. Go back home and open that notebook. The way this ministry is going, is that what God told us? We started well, but on the way they said, if you are going like this, you will be hungry. And he said, so which one works now? They said, let me tell you the one that works now. Do this, do that, and you are veered off from what God told you and your covenant with God. Are we together? On bending focus. We need to become people of focus so that you are not distracted. Thank God for the great things, but you must be at your vision. Thank God for food. Thank God for the blessings that follow destiny but never be distracted by them i listened to a video i watched a video years ago i think it was by late steve jobs it was a video that they did in 1992 or thereabout and it was then you know um they were really very small and he was doing a little training for some of the senior executives of his corporation then and i listened very carefully to what he told them he told them that our goal is, you know, I can't remember exactly what he said the goal was, but there was no mention of money there. There was no mention of fame there. There was no mention of reaching the whole world just like a human effort of becoming famous. They were never part of the goals. The goal was to be able, based on what they said, to at least be able to contribute to make the world a better place by offering whatever it is that they were offering. I said, no wonder they became great. For someone from beginning, you say, this life, my share, it must come. That's your goal. And you find out you won't go far that way because already, you are already at the corridors of compromise because the goal is not, the goal is not pure and not, um, the goal is not superior enough to guide your life and ward off distractions. Number three, is someone learning? The third price for greater and higher dimensions is the price of greater enlightenment. Oh, please settle and listen to this one. The price for greater enlightenment or the price of greater enlightenment. 
Galatians chapter 2. <laughs> God is going to speak to someone now. From verse 1 and 2. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Price number three, the price of greater enlightenment. Galatians 2, 1 and 2. Then 14 years later, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus also with me. I love verse 2. It says, and I went up by revelation. I didn't go up by suggestion. I didn't go up by what I went up by revelation. Of course, it has its literal meaning there to explain what he was doing. But that, that is a prophetic expression there. I went up. In this kingdom, we go up by revelation. I went up by revelation. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. It has become an anthem in this house. 8 and verse 2, 1 Corinthians. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. The price of greater enlightenment. Acts chapter 18 from verse 24 and 25. Acts 18. Remember a popular story? The Bible says a certain Jew named Apollos, he was born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in scriptures. The Bible says he came to Ephesus. And then the man was instructed in the way of the Lord being fervent in spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord knowing only the baptism of john let's read 26 the bible says one time he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of god more perfectly the price of greater enlightenment listen if you want to rise higher in life you must contend for greater levels of enlightenment and i broke this enlightenment into two number one the first dimension of greater enlightenment you must contend for they are called the mysteries of the kingdom please write the first dimension of enlightenment you must contend for you must contend for higher and superior levels of the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13, 11, for it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. We discussed this already. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof on earth? So that's the first dimension of the greater enlightenment. You must know the mysteries of the kingdom. What are they? The spiritual secrets by which dominion is activated through. It's important for you to know that. Dominion does not just happen. Authority is not only, is, it doesn't just work arbitrarily. It is on the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that we command dominion in this earth. But the second dimension, not many believers have paid attention to it. It's called the law of life and the law of human nature. The law of life and human nature. Listen, there are superior levels of greatness and there are dimensions in this kingdom and in the cosmos that if you do not understand the laws of life and the laws that govern human nature, you can call them the laws of the cosmos. There are laws that operate in this earth failure to know them you will get into all kinds of trouble when you are dealing with the mysteries of the kingdom you will learn the laws of prayer and priesthood is that true you will learn the law of giving you will learn the law of meditation and speaking and all of those things but as wonderful as that is you must be able to complement it with the intelligence of the laws of the cosmos most people do not know this let me show you three scriptures. Luke chapter 16 and verse 8. Hear what Jesus said. Luke 16 and verse 8. If God is blessing you, say amen. amen. 
he gave a parable of the unjust steward and here was the conclusion of that parable the lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation he said wiser than the children of light he acknowledged that they were the children of this world under the influence of the cosmos but he says they are wiser than the children of light do you know that jesus began his teaching look up please notice the structure of jesus's teaching he began his teaching with what we call the beatitudes are we together blessed are these the pure in heart for they shall see god and then eventually he switched into teaching them the cosmos the world system he taught them he now began to give them enlightenment on how to live effectively in the cosmos matthew chapter 10 please he began his teaching in matthew chapter 5 teaching them on prayer teaching them on several things you know righteousness and all of that by the time we get to chapter 10 from verse 16 hear what he said jesus now giving us the wisdom of living and excelling in the cosmos he said behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents one of the few times in the bible where jesus will recommend understudying the serpent the serpent has always typified satan evil and disaster but when it has to do with the intelligence please keep that scripture of excelling in this cosmos he says make sure you learn the wisdom of the serpent and yet be as harmless as doves 17 give us 17 it says but beware of men that is already a very strong instruction he's telling you beware there is something about the human nature in the world that you are living in don't just be a prayer warrior a fasting giant a revelation giant and then don't sustain wisdom please look at me let me teach you this my precious people hear me many believers are completely ignorant as far as the intelligence of dealing with the cosmos is concerned and it has cost us many things beyond our imagination there are laws of human nature there are laws that you must know it is true for instance i've taught you one of them the law of seasons is that true that no season remains consistent seasons change it is a law that operates while the earth remains. is it not in your bible seed time and harvest you will never have seed time alone you will never have harvest alone you must know how to take advantage of seasons when you see the rainy season for us in nigeria here i told you remember the law of seasons every rainy season comes with a letter from dry season i am coming and every dry season comes with a letter from rainy season i am coming if you enjoy the season and don't collect the letter and read it you will be in trouble every time you see evil it is because there is good it's called the law of polarity every time you see darkness is because there is light male female god himself designed that law I'm not talking about some, some Scientology and some demonic thing. I'm talking of the wisdom of the cosmos. Jesus here is telling you, understudy the serpent. There are men who have taken advantage of that season. Even animals and ants that don't have conferences, they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't pray in tongues, but they have taken advantage of the laws of the earth. And with it, they have animals have never experienced ants that we know. We, we have not seen them gang up together to say there is famine because there are laws that they operate. They don't have an advantage we, as far as we know. We know they praise God because the Bible says everything that has breath, let it praise the Lord. But we don't know about prayer. Are we together? Human beings are the only species that are so disoriented. The animals are to the Bible to the point that the Bible says, Oh sluggard, go to the ant and learn that they do not have a king. In other words, there is problem with structure, and yet in it they still excel. The wisdom of the cosmos. There are many natural laws that govern our world. Gravity is not just a spiritual law, it is also a natural law. It is because of the awareness of it today 
we have come into that awareness and we have built things around it to our advantage. There are many things you have to know about life and the nature of men. Is, is, is someone learning now? I wrote here, for instance, you have to understand the principles of cause and effect. It will guide you. In addition to the fear of the Lord that you have, if you understand that there are consequences for every action, it will tame the things that you do. There is the law of seasons. The awareness of the selfish nature of men you can pray in tongues, you can fast, have spiritual understanding, and then in addition, when you now go to the work, the place of work or your place of business, there is an awareness that all human beings are not like those in your house. You know, most believers have been shielded from the reality of how life truly is. They are used to innocent people. They are used to, you can keep your money in your house and come and see someone package it for you and say with love from your brother. And some of us believe that the whole world is like that. Are we together? You can be fasting and someone will cook for you and say this is to sow into your life and then for many especially christian families the moment their children have the honor you don't have to be evil to be exposed to the laws of life unfortunately when you are exposing people and teaching them the wisdom of the cosmos they will say it's not necessary after all i have god i'm going to show you something that will bless you is god blessing you already so many christian young people especially are very naive as to the realities of the cosmos as soon as they come out and they are no longer under the influence of parents or guidance or church maybe they relocate out of nigeria or they now get jobs or they get married or something happens that exposes them to the world they spend about the first 10 years of their lives paying the price of ignorance spiritually alive but very dead in terms of the wisdom of the cosmos so someone can come and say, you know what? I'm a nice person. I love you very much. How much do you have? You say, I have one million. My father gave me and said, he has settled me. He said, just bring it. I'm a very faithful person. And they naively bring it because they say, no, it has to be God because this is how favor works. Most people do not understand the wisdom of the cosmos. That the heart of man is desperately wicked. That is a powerful information you should store as you explore this adventure of life. It's not to make you suspicious it now creates a prayer request lord send good people to my life send destiny helpers to my life because of the awareness of that law are we together so the moment you hear that ah the earth is going to fold up you just know that based on the law of seasons the thing that is is the thing that was and the thing that will be thereafter you will find rest the only person who will close the earth is the one who opened it there is no there is nothing that will happen on earth that is enough to fold the earth like a cotton God will close the earth intentionally. It's not disaster that will close the earth. So no matter how bad what happens, you know, economically, politically, there will always be a way out. It, we are not the first. There have been dark ages in history. Is that true? There has been famine in history. Is that true? But there also has been abundance. Is that true? Just the knowledge of the law of seasons will give you the staying power through the storms in your life. So for this season, I do not have a job. This season, it looks like things are not working. But I understand, number one, the integrity of God. But even within the cosmos, I know that everything is transient. So rather than regretting over current seasons, I begin to prepare and program the seasons coming. Is someone getting blessed? So man of God, while you are looking at 10 members and saying, God, you can't do this to me. Not after all my days of fasting, you should know that the way God works, he works by the law of seasons. There is the law of time and chance. There is the law of process. The knowledge of these laws prepare you immediately. If you hold 20,000, that is not all you will hold. He's only training your hands to hold it well. Is God helping us? Believers are very ignorant. Let me show you something. In Acts chapter 7 and verse 22, there are two personalities in the Bible who have really, really surprised me. Number one is called Moses. Number two is called Abraham. I have studied their lives carefully 
are we together now because of the way they walked with God and I found out that for every one of them look at Moses I want to show you something that will surprise you how many of you know that Moses's assignment was a purely spiritual assignment it was the assignment of a deliverer if Moses was in the New Testament we'll call him an apostle and yet look at the nature of his training the Bible says God sent him to Egypt and he learned he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds why did God subject him to go and learn the wisdom of Egypt whereas his assignment was just to bring people out and to take them into the promised land is that in your Bible? Give us Genesis 12. Ah, I love preaching. Give us Genesis 12. Let me, let me just drum this thing in my... Give, please give us Genesis 12. May God bless you. Thank you. Genesis 12. Watch this now. So God is asking... God is asking Abraham to leave um, his father's house and all of that to a land that he would show him is that true now let me show you something very powerful give us from verse um, I'm trying to look for let's go to verse verse 10 Genesis 12 verse 10 please be patient while I read now remember Abraham had had an encounter with God and God said leave to the place of destiny i will do this for you you will become a father of this and that the bible now said there was famine in the land have you noticed that every time there is hunger and famine where do they go to this is true for abraham this was true for joseph this was true for moses egypt is an antichrist place they do not understand kingdom in terms of kingdom come but they understand the wisdom of the cosmos and whenever God is training his people among the many things he does is he sends them to Egypt and say learn something from Egypt the symbol of Egypt is it not the serpent please talk to me so when he says be as wise as the serpent he's not just saying copy the snake he's saying there is a wisdom that comes with the cosmos give us that scripture please let's just walk it a bit have I lost you, media? And there was famine in the land. And Abraham went down to Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous. Now, this was a man who had spoken with God. You will think after an encounter with God, he should never feel the famine in the land. Your encounter, your altar of prayer, your altar of worship, it may still be rich. And you will be surprised. You will feel the effect of the happenings around the cosmos. Are we learning now? 11 it came to pass when he was come near into Egypt look at are you seeing the pressure of Egypt made him to start telling lies he never told lies when it was his relationship with God but as soon as he got into the system the effect of ignorance on how to operate in the system started producing in him like a man of God will start well not intending to bribe not intending to do witchcraft but as soon as hunger comes he can arrange a conference to raise money he said to Sarai his wife behold now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon uh -huh. next verse please let's hurry up media therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee they shall say this is your wife and they shall kill me but you they will save you you see all these attributes finding expression say I pray you that you are my sister that it may be well with me for your sake and that I will leave did he have to go there if you are going to tell that level of lie to go there why don't you just go down you go back and hunger will kill you but you have to compromise and go into Egypt are you seeing now the price for going into Egypt is that you must be prepared for compromise but if you withdraw you may keep whatever and hunger will kill you and you will die look at the dilemma that this man is in now is someone getting blessed 15 let's finish up let me read it here this these people if I walk with them we're going to be late the king's officials told him about her and she was taken to his house the Bible says the king was good to Abraham because of Sarah and Abraham was given sheep look at the gifts that he was given are you seeing where he got his wealth from where did he get it from in Egypt 
His spirituality was powerful, but his wealth and dominion came when he went to Egypt. He entreated Abraham well for her sake, and he had given him sheep, oxen, and asses, and men servant, and she asses, and camels, and all of that. Let's read down. It says, the Lord now plagued Pharaoh. Are you seeing that now? Everybody look at this. This is powerful, my God. Now, he goes to meet the king in Egypt, Abimelech. Is that true? And Abimelech says, there is something I'm looking for, but I understand that one of the laws of life is the law of exchange. I will have to entreat your favor. This is what I have. Something must leave me for something from you to come. Are you seeing now? The wisdom of Egypt. He didn't sit down and wish the woman like many of us would do. He said, no, I know that I have to give you something that is valuable that you need. That the table of destiny is the table of negotiation. It's not just a table of wishes. World leaders know this. So he says, let me give you gifts. I see that you are not very wealthy. I am wealthy. I need this woman you've told me as your sister. It took God to intervene. God had to say, yes. He started plaguing him because of Abraham's wife. Now, that is the power of a relationship with God. After you have a relationship with God, when you go to the cosmos and Satan wants to take an advantage of you, the God who you have a covenant with will now speak for you like he's speaking. But already, notice, already the gift has been given and there's no record of him collecting it back. 18. Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this that thou hast done to me? Thou did not tell me that she was your wife. 19. It says, Why sayest thou that she's my sister? I may have taken her to wife now. Behold, take your wife and go, but not alone. Go with all the gifts that I brought to you. Are we together now? Go with everything. Verse, verse 20 it says that Pharaoh commanded the men concerning him. They sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Now give us 13 verse 1. It will make a lot of sense to you now. Abraham went out of Egypt. He and his wife and all that he had and lot with him to the south. Are we together? So tell me please, why did God send him to Egypt from this story? You read it. What, what did he really do in Egypt? There was something he needed for his destiny, but it was found in Egypt. He went out of Egypt. Verse 2. Abraham was very rich in cattle. Aha. Uh -huh. Next time you read it, you know where it came from now. He was rich in silver. He was rich in gold. Let's stop there. Don't be afraid when God sends you to learn the wisdom of Egypt. You don't have to be compromised. It is the wisdom of the serpent you can learn and still have the dignity of kingdom integrity. Why? Because your relationship with God is still intact. So he says you are a sheep in the midst of wolves. You don't run away. You have to wear the regalia of wolves to look like one, but you know by heart that you are a sheep. So you will register the company like other companies. You will go for the board meetings too with secular people and antichrist people. You don't run away waiting for only believers to teach you secular knowledge. You will go to a university with hedonistic people. And while they are teaching, you still have the conviction of heaven. Are we together now? Hallelujah. It's very important for you to understand this. The price of greater enlightenment. I've had the honor and the privilege of learning the wisdom of leadership and even administration. And it is not all the teachings. I have a system of verifying and editing everything I learn. Albeit my heart is open to receive wisdom from people. They tell you someone is a professor in Harvard and Oxford and Yale, it will be stupid of you to think they don't know what they are saying. They may not understand spiritual things, but as far as the matters of Egypt is concerned, they have something you need. This is where the pride of Christians come. We hold our Bible and we say yes, but the truth is that some of us cannot interpret what is written there until we take advantage of the wisdom of Egypt. 
you, do, you are not allowed to copy the lifestyle of Egypt, nor to bow to the gods of Egypt, but you can extract their wisdom. Are we learning? So for some of you here, in addition to your prayer, in addition to your fasting, in addition to what God has done, you may need to go online and learn about administration and leadership. A 30 minutes video on proper administration can turn your ministry to a new dimension. The problem with the ministry is not spirituality. You are doing well, but you do not know how to multiply and preserve things. There are ministries that their problem is financial management because the truth is they do not have the wisdom and the intelligence for proper planning. It's not that God is not faithful, but there is no system. And this is even true for nations. No wonder many unbelieving nations seem to have economic stability and have it. They, do, they may not honor the God of heaven, but my goodness, you see the dexterity, you see organization in those nations. We can humble ourselves and learn when it has to do with the wisdom of the cosmos. It is not unscriptural to learn. Albeit you submit it to the wisdom of the world and edit the part of it that directly does not promote kingdom come. But there is a part of it that is important. Look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that birdie. If you ever find out how Abraham was rich, he was sent to Egypt. The Bible says, talking about Moses. Now give us that scripture. Acts chapter 7 and 22. It says that Moses was sent and he learned he was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians god himself allowed him i hope you know moses was in ministry moses was not like daniel who was in politics do you know when daniel went i wish we had time would have dealt with the story of daniel when daniel went to egypt it's in your bible in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says when they went there as slaves, Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat, not the king's knowledge. It was the king's meat he refused because it was given to idols, but he was taught the ways of the Babylonians. It's in your Bible. It was the king's meat he rejected because this one was offered directly to idols, but the wisdom of the Babylonians he had it and after 10 days they tested him he said he was 10 times better is it in your bible could it be that there are many many things in addition not in defiance to spiritual laws we must incorporate guided by the word of god and structured mentorship there are laws of life there are realities about the human nature that we must know and understand Otherwise, failure will be imminent for many people. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Kateka Post. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.